Hi guys and welcome back to my channel, welcome to today's video. We haven't even started the video yet and I already give up. I've given up with everything. So I've been in the process of moving over the last week or so, hence why I haven't really been uploading any videos. With moving comes a new setup and new settings on the camera. I don't know actually how to use any... I had to buy because there's a lot of echo in here because this room is currently empty, there's no furniture in it. So I had to buy a new microphone. Cordioid? Cordioid? No fucking clue. I had to buy a new microphone to cancel out all the echo. I don't know what's going on with this lighting. It's just a guessing game. Is it going to look good in the editing? Probably not. It's, I tried to film a video earlier this week. It was bloody awful. I've given up. But so we're going into today's video knowing that it's probably going to be a little bit shit. Maybe that could be the tagline for my channel. A little bit shit. So for today's video, I thought we could do something really easy and look at the subreddit, Today I Fucked Up. Today I fucked up by buying everyone an Ancestry DNA kit and ruining Christmas. Earlier this year, Ancestry DNA had a sale on their kit. I thought it would be a great gift idea, so I bought six of them for Christmas presents. Today my family got together to exchange presents for our Christmas Eve tradition, and I gave my mum, dad, brother and two sisters each a kit. As soon as everyone opened their gift at the same time, my mum started freaking out. She told us how she didn't want us taking them because they have unsafe chemicals. We explained to her how there are actually no chemicals, but she, we could tell she was still flustered. Later, she started trying to convince us that only one of us kids needed to take it since we all have the same results and to resell extra kits for some money. Fast forward, our parents have been fighting upstairs for the past hour. We are downstairs trying to figure out who has a different dad. Too long did it read. I brought everyone in my family ancestry DNA kits for Christmas. Mum started freaking out. Now my parents are fighting and my dad might not be my dad. Update. Thank you so much for all the love and support. My sister's brother and I have not yet decided if we're going to take the test. No matter what the results are, we still love each other and our parents no matter what. Update 2. Christmas isn't ruined. My fuck up actually turned into a Christmas miracle. Turns out my sister's father passed away shortly after she was born. A good friend of my mum's was able to help her through the darkest time in her life and they went on to fall in love and create the rest of our family. They never told us because of how hard it was for my mum. Last night she was strong enough to share photos and stories with us for the first time and it truly brought us even closer together as a family. This is a Christmas we will never forget. And yes, we are all excited to get our test results. Merry Christmas, everyone. P.S. Sorry my mum isn't a whore. No, you're not my daddy. I feel like I should get a DNA kit to find out if my parents are my real parents because they're always telling me how they just found me outside of a laboratory one day. What's those DNA kits to find out all the different ethnicities you might be? Is it, is it just a standard DNA kit? I want to get one of those done as well. Today I fucked up by wearing a shawl which ruined my relationship with my girlfriend. Minor background, I'm a pretty affectionate and at times effeminate dude. I'm six foot two and have a pretty tough guy background in that I was in the special forces a while ago and my roommates all served as well, but I also have thin wrists and sit on my friends' laps and blow kisses to them and shit. No, I'm not gay, I'm just me. So while I was in a shop with my roommate a few weeks ago, he saw these really cool shawls that we both couldn't get out of our heads. He returned last weekend to buy them, now we have these shawls. Mine makes me look like a Star Wars character and his looks like the outlawed Josie Wales. These are seriously awesome shawls. The first night we wore them, everyone at the dive bar we went to, re dudes. I've never figured out what re colon means. Tell me in the comments below, please. Re, like I use it in emails. Does it mean regarding? Because I use it in emails and I don't know what it means. Thought they were awesome as well. Then this girl and her friend arrive on invite from Shawl Bro and they are seriously turned off by our sweet shawls, like acting pretty weird about them making comments, whatever. So I get a call from my GF. She's tired and wants to hang out in mine. So I bid these mean girls and Shawl Bro adieu and head home. I'm still wearing the shawl when my GF arrives and she's also really taken aback. She won't even kiss me until I take it off. We get to do the deed and go to sleep and the next morning she starts asking me if I'm gay and she's really serious and aggressive about it. I tell her I'm not, that I'd definitely know by now if I was and she counters it with her major evidence of the fact that I own a shawl. Anyway, she gets weird and leaves and then sends me a text later about how she, she's sorry and needs to think about what kind of man she wants and then doesn't contact me for days. So yesterday I invite her out, she's now stumbling over her words and talking about how she likes tough guys and she grew up in the south and needs to get used to the big city, but that she doesn't know this or that. And eventually I just tell her very politely to get fucked because I'm pretty insulted by this point. On the way back, now that I'm not directly in front of her, I get this long apologetic text from her. The crux of it is, yeah, she's not that into me anymore because I wore a shawl. Later on, I tell Shawl Bro about this and he also had a blowout with the girl he was seeing over his shawl the very same night we went out. We were both going to keep the shawls though, they are warm. Too long did it read, me and my friend bought cursed shawls and now we are single. And the guy put up pictures 
in the shawl and it's like really i mean in the second one shawl bro i really get a dumper guy over, over that <laughs> i think he looks quite nice to be honest today i fucked up by swiping on my girlfriend's phone not safe for work so this happened a few days ago and i'm still not sure i'm 100 percent ready to tell the story but here it goes I've been with my girlfriend for about a year and I already know she's the love of my life. She's perfect for me, we're perfect for each other. We're getting ready to move in with each other and I want nothing more than to start a family with her and spend the rest of my life with her. We went on a short vacation last week and when we returned home she gave me her phone to look at some photos from the trip. She went to the bathroom when I had her phone and as I was scrolling through pictures it kind of jumped to a period that was about a year and a half ago. If you have an iPhone you know what I'm talking about. You scroll a little bit too fast and all of a sudden you're back at the start of the photo album. It's annoying as hell. But some photos caught my eye, some photos that I really shouldn't be seeing of her and her previous boyfriend. There she is, the love of my life, trying to get her mouth around the biggest dick I've ever seen in my life. I've watched porn, a lot. I've never seen a dick like this. I'm talking bigger than two Coke cans stacked on top of each other, longer and thicker. As far as I could tell, she was unable to get her teeth around it. That just sounds like lockjaw waiting to happen. It's nothing to be jealous over. I could see another thumbnail of her comparing the size of his dick to her forearm with a look of wonder and glee on her face. I closed the pictures and I've acted like nothing has happened, but I cannot get these images out of my mind. I've never been self-conscious about my dick size. In fact, if you believe the stats, I'm significantly above average, but this has destroyed my self-esteem. Why do men do this to themselves? Why are you going to be that superficial? We haven't had sex since. I can't concentrate on my work. I just wish I'd never seen those damn pictures. Too long didn't read, I accidentally saw some pictures of the love of my life sucking the biggest dick on earth and my stupid male ego is destroyed. I'm kind of annoyed by that one, humans are so fucking weird, like why... Why does it matter and why would you do that to yourself? I don't compare my bits to other women's bits because it doesn't matter. Question my... it doesn't matter. I don't know why some men do this to themselves. Dick size is probably largely irrelevant unless it's this big and then it can never fit in a vagina or it's this big and can never fit. You know, if you're not this and you're not this, then you're probably gonna be okay. And you, like, <laughs> why do we always end up having sex chats on my channel? If you're only using your penis in sex and that's it, maybe there's a problem there. You know, you can, I'm not even talking about sex toys, you know, you can like do other things than just put a penis in a vagina during sex, you know, if you're that insecure about your penis size anyway, I don't know, I don't want to be having these chats. Grow up! Today I fucked up by coming into a coconut. This fuck up didn't happen today but quite a few years back. For obvious reasons I'm using a throwaway account as my family knows my main Reddit username. Anyway, around eight years back I lived in northern Mozambique a coastal southern African ta country, not town, with quite a warm climate. My mother at the time was going through a health nut phrase, phase and only buying food she deemed healthy enough. One of these was coconuts. She would buy several coconuts a week to use in food from the local market. Anyway, being a horny teenager, I fapped in reg regular intervals. Unfortunately, there were some severely stressful examinations coming up for me and as such, my fapping reached a higher peak than usual and I was feeling pretty sexually frustrated. One day, I hear that my mother is going to be out for pretty much the entire afternoon. Horny me decides it would be a fantastic idea to fuck a coconut. Honestly, to this day, I can't fathom why I thought that would be a good idea, but my train of thought back then was clearly somewhat clogged. I end up gragging the coconut drill and, <laughs> through 20-ish minutes of concentrated effort, end up creating a hole large enough for me to stick my porker into. Imagine going to that, but in that 20 minutes, you could have like, probably fapped four times in that 20 but you had to get a drill and get technical, an engineer on a coconut. The teenage male mind is fascinating. I decide it requires some lube and grab the nearest slippery thing, some butter, before shoving it into the coconut, followed shortly by my meat. I fuck the coconut and actually feels pretty damn good, so I blow my load, shove the coconut under my bed and continue about my day. For the next week, my coconut is my saviour. Whenever I want to get off, I simply take it out and fuck it in its delightfully tight hole, made better each time by accumulating volumes of my semen and butter. Imagine putting that on your toast, semen and butter. Acting as a lubricant. It's heaven. I'm, ups I'm upset reading this, I'm upset. Now, before I continue, I'd best mention that at the time, my area was experiencing quite humid, muggy weather, which exacerbated an already existing fly problem. Disgustingly fat, bloated flies were commonly found around our house and the exterminators couldn't really do anything because it was a localised area problem that would go away in the winter. About a week and a bit after the initial coconut fuck, I'd been using it pretty much every day since then. 
I began to notice a few more flies than usual, as well as an odd unpleasant smell around my room. Must be the coconut, right? So I decide I'll fuck it once more before I throw it out and get a new one. Worst mistake I've ever made. You see, the reason for the increased number of flies was that the coconut was evidently, in hindsight, a perfect place to lay eggs. As I penetrate the coconut one last time, I begin to feel a strange wriggling sensation. Puzzled, I pull my cock out to discover that it is covered in rotted and mouldy butter and semen and teeming with tiny fucking maggots. They were wriggling all over my dickhead and some were even trying to force their way up my urethra. I don't even have a penis, but I just clenched them. I screamed and threw the coconut against the wall, which made the situation worse by spilling the contents. Hours of vigorous cock scrubbing, vomiting and cleaning the remnants were spent reflecting on what the fuck I was doing with my life. Never again. Don't fuck coconuts. Okay, one more for this video. Today I fucked up by banging my first cousin. So it didn't happen today, but last weekend. Well, that makes much difference. Finally getting around to really processing it all and I guess trying to deal with it. Went out for drinks with my girlfriend and we met up with my younger cousin at the bar. We'd all hung out once before and had a great time. My cousin invited a couple of her friends to the bar too. We did some bar hopping. I got shit faced pretty unintentionally. The last bar was, I swear, not putting any mixes in my cocktails. They were straight alcohol. So anyway, we're about to leave. My cousin's friends are trying to get her home because she's shit faced too. Well, my girlfriend was our designated driver, so we offered to let her stay in our spare room. Everyone was cool with that because who's safe in the family, right? Wrong. We get home and I had to piece together some of this later because I blacked out for most of it. Apparently initially everything was cool. My cousin went to the spare room and my girlfriend got her situated. The problem started a little later when I, in my infinite wisdom, decided to walk straight out of my bedroom with my girlfriend in and into my cousin's room. I don't particularly remember much except for two details which I guess are not important to the story. Okay, one might be. Decide what your point is going to be before you write it, thank you. I remember her giving me a very enthusiastic blowjob, which, as you can imagine, makes a lot of noise. Apparently, after a while, my girlfriend came out of the room wondering where, the, where I was because I just fucking disappeared. She didn't barge into the room or anything, but she heard the noises. It was pretty fucking obvious. So at that point, she left, like me. She left me and I don't blame her. Anyways, that means they wake up the next morning having blacked out, oblivious that my girlfriend was gone already, but I'm fucking naked next to my naked cousin. There's cum all over the bed where her face was. She didn't even sleep with a pillow. That's the most alarming part. Weird. There's obviously no hiding this, but I'm still half drunk and I want to sneak back into my room, which I found empty, so yeah. I haven't heard from my girlfriend in a week and I'm pretty sure we're done and I don't blame her. All I can hope for now is that this shit doesn't get out of my family because I'll probably implode. No, my cousin and I are not going to start hooking up regularly. It's actually super awkward and she has hardly said a word to me either. Again, I don't blame her. Too long didn't read. Drunkenly slept my cousin, ruined my relationship, family might hear about it. I'm an idiot. How would you get so... Well, I mean, being drunk is not an excuse for cheating because if you know that you're going to act like that, if you get drunk, then just don't get drunk. If you give a shit about a relationship that you're in. But how do you get so drunk that you fuck your own cousin? Not an idiot. That's not like Christmases with most families aren't awkward to begin with. Imagine going to a Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving or whatever with your family and knowing that you fucked at least maybe one eighth or one sixteenth of all the people gathered. Anyway, that's all for this video. Hopefully, <laughs> I hope the audio is okay. It's my first time using this microphone, so if the audio is not okay, if no audio was recorded, then you'll just have to guess what I've been saying this whole time. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.